Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about osteology of scapula. The scapula is a triangular large flat bone situated at the posterolateral aspect of the thorax over the second to seventh ribs. The scapula has two surfaces. One is the costal surface or anterior surface. Another one is the dorsal surface. Three border. The superior border. The lateral border. And the medial border. Three angles. The superior angle, inferior angle, the lateral angle that is shown by the glenoid cavity or glenoidal angle. Three processes, the spinous process here, the acromion process and the coracoid process. Okay, so we have identified that acromion process, the coracoid process, spinous process, superior border. This is the this is the medial border or vertebral border and this is the lateral border. This is the dorsal aspect of the scapula. Okay. So, this is the dorsal aspect of the, the right scapula. Here is the right scapula is the dorsal aspect. So, this is the anterior or costal view of the right scapula. Here is that. Okay. This is the. So, in anatomical position, how can you hold in anatomical position? The glenoid cavity is directed forwards laterally and slightly upward. Okay. This is the left scapula. Glenoid cavity is this, is the glenoid cavity is directed forward lateral and slightly upward dorsal surface is convex divided by the spinal spine into supraspinous fossa and infraspinous fossa the coracoid process is directed forward slightly laterally lateral border is thick here medial border is thin comparatively to that of the lateral border Lateral border is thick and runs from the glenoid cavity to the inferior angle. Okay, so if you go there, this is the scapula. This is the, this is the left scapula. I'm holding by left hand. First of all, direction of the glenoid cavity. This is the glenoid cavity. Directed upwards, forwards and laterally. Little bit upward, laterally and forward. This is the Tip of the coracoid process, it is directed, directed forward slightly laterally, and this is the lateral border, almost vertical in our anatomical position. This is the medial border. This is the costal surface here. This is the coracoid process. This is the acromion process. This is the spinous process of the spinous process of the scapula. Okay, we got that. Okay, so lateral view of the scapula, we'll find out that lateral or glenoid angle bears the glenoid cavity. This is the glenoid cavity. The glenoid cavity is a shallow cavity. So it is deepened by the glenoidal labrum at the periphery so that it can hold the head of the scapula nicely. This head should be in the glenoid cavity. So cavity is deepened by the is by the labrum, the glenoidal labrum here. Okay, lateral or glenoid angle bears the glenoid cavity articulated with the head of the humerus to from the shoulder joint. There is a ball and socket type of synovial joint. Inferior angle is covered by the latissimus dorsi. Okay, inferior angle is here. This is the inferior angle that is covered by the latissimus dorsi. 
it is similar to torsi has also small origin from here it is multiple origin one of the origin is from the inferior angle on the dorsal aspect of the of the scapula superior angle is covered by the trapezius this is the superior angle okay between the superior border and the medial border this is the coracoid process coracoid process has an epiphysis we call it atavistic epiphysis okay it has atavistic epiphysis and we have other epiphysis like pressure epiphysis at the end of the long bone then the traction epiphysis in the greater tubercle lesser tubercle of the humerus greater trochanter lesser trochanter of the femur we may have aberrant epiphysis in our metacarpal bone specifically the first metacarpal bone that is unusual location the other location okay so we got this the lateral border border this is thick okay this is the glenoid cavities here okay this is the acrimen process coracoid process superior border and this is the suprascapular notch here suprascapular notch okay if i can make it large i can just show you okay this is the this is the acromion process the coracoid process is here superior border suprascapular notch here is the glenoid cavity is here it is at the margin will get the capsular ligament and the glenoidal labrum okay this is the costal surface the dorsal surface spine of the scapula okay we got that and and this is an example of coracoid process example of atavistic epiphysis okay we got that okay so we have to identify the structure on the scapula these are the answer key is here and we'll identify i will not go through that part i'll request all the students to go through the key answer answer keys okay just match the number with the structure like that of the origin of the short head of biceps brachii from number two that is that should be from the from the original shorthand of biceps brachii from the tip of the coracoid process along with the coracoid brachialis okay facet for the clavicle number one facet for clavicle for articulation with that of the clavicle to form acromial clavicular joint there is an example of plain synovial joint okay here we'll get number six like infraglenoid tubercle origin of the long head of the triceps brachii okay we got that number seven and nine origin of teres minor muscle um, in between them there is group for the circumflex scapular artery number 10 the number 10 is the origin of the teres major muscle here and we have the number 11 conoid tubercle okay. we'll get at 11 number 11 conoid tubercle for the articulation of the coracoclavicular ligament conoid part and number 12 is the coracoid process we got that okay number 11 for the conoid tubercle for the attachment of the conoid part of the coracoclavicular ligament okay let's go there and this is very important this i have taken from microsoft powerpoint online picture it is their credit we learned that part so tip of the coracoid process for the origin of what the biceps brachii short head and coracobrachialis what is their nerve supply by the musculocutaneous nerve from which plexus brachial plexus from which cord from the lateral cord this is the long head of the biceps brachii that should come from the supraglenoid tubercle okay biceps brachii are innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve this is the infraglenoid tubercle origin of the long head of triceps nerve supply by the radial nerve this is the costal surface and around two-third of the costal surface site of origin of subscapularis nerve supply upper and lower subscapular nerve this is the vertebral border on the costal aspect 
anterior anterior surface or costal surface is the insertion of the serratus anterior first digitation okay up to the root of the spine of the scapula this level okay then if you go down on the costal surface then second third third digitation then another four or five digitation near the inferior angle on the costal surface so vertebral border but the costal surface the site of insertion of the serratus anterior nerve supply by long thoracic nerve coming from the c5 c6 c7 root here is the insertion of trapezius nerve supply by the spinal accessory nerve here is the origin of the deltoid muscle very long origin and this is the origin of deltoid muscle nerve supply by the axillary nerve here on the vertebral border on the dorsal surface or medial border on the dorsal surface the insertion of levator scapula innervated by c3 c4 and dorsal scapular nerve nerve supply of rhomboid minor again dorsal scapular nerve nerve supply of rhomboid as major also called rhomboid major by the dorsal scapular nerve this latissimus dorsi it is innervated by the thoracodorsal nerve latissimus dorsi is also other origin this is one of the origin this is the teres major innervated by the lower subscapular nerve teres minor innervated by the axillary nerve this is the infaglionic tubercle area and origin of the of the origin of the long head of the of the triceps nerve supply by radial nerve okay we got that now we'll go to the next slide okay again i'll request everyone to match the answer key with the structure okay like insertion of rhomboid minor number 21 here rhomboid minor insertion okay then insertion rhomboid minor 21 and rhomboid minor insertion should be 19 rhomboid minor and here it should be rhomboid major 21 okay rhomboid major origin will be the 21 okay then this is the major major okay so origin of infraspinatus is here is the here we'll make it correct okay so this is the origin of infraspinatus this is the insertion of the number 19 rhomboid minor insertion of the rhomboid major here this is insertion of levator scapulae so everyone should this is from the Gray's anatomy and we have to check from the Gray's anatomy anything must be correct everything and all the every key is important to us okay okay again entry aspect of the scapular identification keys we'll find out the subscapular is muscle here this is the origin of the long head of triceps brachii origin of the coracobrachialis and the short head of biceps brachii and this is number 11 is the insertion of pectoralis minor muscle insertion of the pectoralis minor muscle okay so let's go to the next slide superior aspect of the scapular identification we have to identify all the bony processes here this is the facet for the clavicle to form the acromioclavicular joint this is the this is the coracoid process that is an atavistic epi, epiphysis here okay this is the what is the what is the coracoid process number nine is this is the coracoid process okay and this is the this is the coracoid process this is the head of the of the scapula number five and we have the glenoid space space on that side this is the acromion process so acromion process coracoid process head of the scapula this is a supraspinous fossa for the origin of the supraspinatus muscle we should have a, have a notch here suprascapular notch here so again this is the number five is the head okay we'll get the glenoid cavity on this side number 10 number 10 is the is the 
attachment of the trapezoid ligament a part of the coracoclavicular ligament number nine this is the coracoid process okay this is the head this is the acrimen process again we have to identify this structure number six acrimen process acrimen process number seven acromial angle is here this is a glenoid k fossa okay it is margin will get the attachment of the capsular ligament and the glenoidal labrum okay in fact the tubercle for the origin of the long head of the triceps brachii muscle triceps brachii muscle coracoid process here tip of the coracoid process origin of the short head of the biceps brachii and the coracobrachialis okay here is the ligament we have to find out capsule of the shoulder joint okay and in the glenoidal labrum we just discussed here we get the capsule of the shoulder joint and the glenoidal labrum at the glenoid cavity area okay we got that here they have shown the joint capsule here okay and capsule of the acromioclavicular joint is here coracoacromial ligament here is the coracoid process acrimen acrimen process coracoacromial ligament here coracohemoral ligament we have the coracohemoral ligament this is coracoid process to the humerus coracohemoral ligament coracoclavicular ligament yes coracoclavicular ligament two part one is the trapezoid part another is the conoid part of the coracoclavicular ligament suprascapular ligament this is the suprascapular ligament it is over the suprascapular nerves for the passage of the suprascapular nerve and the suprascapular vessel passes over the ligament okay spinoglenoid ligament should be between the spine and the glenoid cavity it is not shown here distinctly it is underneath this and that is for the passage of the suprascapular vessels okay this is the anastomosis around the scapula is very important to us we have to know that part so we have three arteries this is the suprascapular artery branch of the thyrocervical trunk another branch of the thyrocervical trunk there is the deep branch of the transverse cervical artery the transverse cervical artery this is a deep branch going there and that is also coming from the thyrocervical trunk here there is a big branch of the subclavian artery okay then here is the circumflex scapular artery branch of the subscapular artery here okay so here is the this so this artery the that artery this artery they form anastomosis around the scapula so is there any blockage here or blockage here then there will be compensation by this anastomosis there is a the clinical importance if there is any blockage to the to the distal part of the subclavian artery or proximal part of the axillary artery then that anastomosis will help to get blood supply to the upper extremity there is the importance triangle of auscultation sometimes it is asked by the old anatomist okay what is the boundary and content boundary okay below and above by the lower border of the trapezius Be, below it is we can say the one side boundary here this boundary the medial boundary by the lateral border of the lower part of the of the trapezius okay the lower boundary with the horizontal border of the of the latissimus dorsi muscle the lateral boundary by the medial border of the of the scapula okay so lower lower part of the vertebral border of the scapula here this is the triangle of auscultation it has some clinical importance this part is devoid of muscle it is present between the sixth and seventh rib and the sixth intercostal space so if we place a stethoscope there we can easily auscultate the lung sounds nicely better than other places because there is no muscular obstruction okay winging of the scapula is very important due to injury to the long thoracic nerve 
Long thoracic nerve passes over the chest to just under the skin and subcutaneous tissue. Okay, so it is very prone to injury, especially if person is falling from the motorcycle on the chest, lateral side of the chest, skin is gone, nerve may be involved. Also, in case of difficult delivery of the baby or falling from a tree and person is able to hold the, the branches in the lower part of the tree, in that case, we may have damage to the C5, C6, C7 nerve roots of the brachial plexus and these roots contribute in the formation of the long thoracic nerve. Person will have winged scapula, specifically the sc scapula will coming out of the thoracic wall, inferior angle of the scapula will be very prominent here like this and if you push and punch in the wall, it will be more prominent, okay. And this person has hard time to raise the hand above, above 90 degree in abduction abduction because of paralysis of the of the serratus anterior muscle okay ossification of the scapula we have one primary center of ossification that come in eight intrauterine life we have around seven secondary center of ossification that come crocodile process first year rest of all most of them come around the puberty and a variable part of glenoid cavity has another another center of secondary ossification center that come in 14th year in the female 17th year in the male okay and that's all about the osteology of the scapula if you have any question please feel free to ask me please share the information with your friends and please support my channel please subscribe me have a nice and blessed day bye now